a VPN, now the Rich Video Blog Network, home to weekly NFL predictions, personality profiles, sports video blogs, professional wrestling video blogs, entertainment video blogs, MBTA video blogs, and lots more. Collection of my work going back to June of 2014 is on Facebook and YouTube, RVBN, Bellica, Massachusetts. Good afternoon, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Google+. Plus. This is Rich again, back for your first video blog of the day. I mean, second video blog of the day for Monday, December 19th, 2016, around 5 p.m. in Bellica, Massachusetts. It was a sunny day out today, but cold, only about 26, 27 degrees. Tonight's going to be in the teens. Tomorrow's going to be at about 32, 33 degrees. Then the moderating trend of 40s. The next chance of participation is going to be all rain. So whatever snow banks are there are going to melt. And and. Christmas Day looks like 51, 52 degrees. No white Christmas in southern New England. Some news to report on the RVBN News. Why do, 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 do. The UMass Lower River Hawks basketball team beat Central um, Connecticut State University by the score of 86-69 last night. Also, the San Francisco Giants signed shortstop Jimmy Rollins to a minor league contract with an invite to spring training. And Sony's Pictures Television is considering rebooting All in the Family, Good Times, and Jefferson's for a miniseries. Why? Reboots of classic television series don't don't work out. And they're running out of ideas in Hollywood. Why don't they have a reality television series about cute leggy blondes from Orlando, Florida? That would be a major hit. And that's about it on the news from the RVBN News. Why do, 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 do. Be back in a flash with my second video blog of the day. Keep calm, everybody. I am a Julie Bunning guy. Molly Rose Blair, the WCCO rocks and has nice legs. Elizabeth Hot, so, so stunning. She's the best. Amy Sweezy's awesome, awesome Amy. Then the Church of WPIX Channel of New York's got the best legs in New York City. Bar none and Rocking Cougar. Barbara Gibbs of ABC 11 has a sweet southern accent. Best legs in Raleigh, North Carolina. And Len Clair, WHH Channel 7, Boston. Morning meteorologist is a sweetheart and she's got the best legs in Boston. Seven cute leggy blondes only on RVBN. I'm back. My second video blog subject of the day is about the TV courtroom series, reality series, The People's Court. This video blog is about the original one of the People's Court, which lasted from September 14th, 1981 through May 17th, 1993, with repeats going to September 9th, 1994 in syndication. And this, and it was produced by Ralph Edwards and Stu Belladette Productions, and it was distributed by Laura Miller Tower Pictures. Eventually it became Warner Brothers to Television Domestic Distribution. And the judge presiding over the People's Court was Judge Joseph Wapner, Rusty Burrell was the bailiff, and Jack Ha Ha, ha L was the announcer, and Doug Llewellyn was the host and the reporter. And it was a small claims court. Background of the People's Court. Back in the mid-1970s, uh, a courtroom reality show was pitched to Monty Hall, who hosted Let's Make a Deal, and he had a young intern by the name of Stu Billadette, and he, he, he showed it to Monty Hall, and this says this could be a good television series, but networks and syndication took a pass on it. And in 1980, that concept was bought by Ralph Edwards and Stu Belladette and they shot a couple of pilots with the People's Court in 1980 
with Judge Joe Wapner presiding, and they got a distributor, the Lorimar Telepictures, and it went into syndication in September of 1981, and it lasted 12 years in syndication, the original run. And the salt show is decorated like a real courtroom. Courtroom. But it's not really a court at all. It's kind of a form of binding arbitration. And the, there were two parties, a plaintiff and a defendant, suing in small claims court, and the defendant, I mean the plaintiff, could only sue for $1,500, but that got raised to $5,000 when the series ended in 1993, both parties had civil suits, but they dismissed those cases to have the dispute settled in the people's court. And there was a half-hour sh um, show, and Judge Joseph Wapner would would like preside over their case. He would say, "I've heard, I heard your complaints." And then he would hear both the plaintiff's side and the defendant's side. And this was about maybe seven or eight minutes. Then he would go for a decision to be rendered unless if somebody dismisses the case. And then afterwards they would have um, Doug Llewellyn, a host and a reporter, um, interview both parties, and then he would say, um, Mr. Mr. Burrell has something for you to sign, and sends up the next case. Sometimes they would only have one case per show, or sometimes when the cases were, were like solved completely, they would ha have, if there was time, anybody in the studio audience usually ask questions to ju judge Joe Wapner. And usually on the people's court, both parties do not, not like, um, the, both parties do not pay judgment for the, for the money awarded. Both parties actually are paid from a fund which is set up by, by the producers and they deduct the monetaries that are lost and then other stuff. And the people's court um, was actually just a form of entertainment. It had no association with the judge judicial system of California. And from time to time, the people's court was filmed in Los Angeles, but once in a while, it would go across the country and film in like different courthouses across the country. And it lasted 12 years in syndication with 2,484 shows produced. It was a top-rated courtroom um, reality drama in the top 10 of syndicated shows for years. But by the early 1990s, it was fading. And the producers wanted to, like, revamp the show. Uh, but they ran out of an idea, so... They canceled the show in 1993. Judge Joseph Wapner did not hear about the cancellation of the show from a phone call. His brother-in-law read it in the newspapers. And just Judge Joseph Wapner was so disgusted about this, he had resentment of the show getting axed. Why didn't they contact him? And it was so disappointing for him being told that. He probably was dis very disappointed and disgusted. But they had reruns of the People's Court for one extra year in syndication, hoping the show would get revived in 1994, but it didn't. Then they had reruns on the USA Network of the People's Court for two years until in 1997 they revived the People's Court as an hour-long show, which is still going on today. And that, I don't watch that version of the People's Court. The original one was much, much better. They had an awesome theme song and Doug Wellen would always say, if you have a, if you have a, if you have a conflict, 
that cannot get get resolved. Don't take your law into your own hands. Take them to court. That was one of the catch lines in 1980s. And I wonder if the people's court reruns in the 1980s will pop up somewhere in the near future, like on Me TV or Antenna TV or Cozy TV or Decades or Retro TV. It won't appear on Buzz because it's not a game show. And that's about it on that. I'll be back later. Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Google Plus. My final video blog of the which will be about the Wrestling Album 2 Pile Driver, which came out in 1987 by the WWE. Keep calm, everybody. I'm a Julie Pudding guy. I'm Molly Wolf Blood of WCC Oaks and has a nice life. There's a Bethat So So Stunning. She's fast. Amy Squeezies. Awesome, awesome Amy. I'm in the church of WPIX Channel of New York. Such a rocking cougar. got the best legs in New York City. Bar none. Bobby Gibbs of ABC 11 has that sweet southern accent. Jamie Hirsch of the NHL Network is so, so awesome. She's got nice legs. Heidi Watney of the MLB Network is so, so sweet. She's got the best legs in the MLB Network. And... In the words of the Patel last week, no boss buying.